Hi guys, welcome back to another Bourbon Santa video. And uh, we're doing a fresh crack. This is Old Forester Single Barrel Barrel Strength. Rawr! Very excited. I've only ever had samples of the Old Forester Barrel Strength single barrel rye. Now this is 129.0 proof. Warehouse G, floor three. So, oh. I, I rarely see single barrel old foresters, but I have, through the help of some of you guys and some local liquor stores here, I have a, a little collection of them, I've got four at the moment for single barrel bourbons. Now, single barrel rye, I like never see them, never. So when this one just happened to jump out at me in a random indiscriminate liquor store near me and for just a little bit over retail, as most allocated things are here in Florida, I grabbed it and uh, I had to have this in the collection and uh, I can't wait to share a little bit of this with some of my patrons. So, we're going to nose and taste this, and then, oh, stupid, why? Stop it, stop it. So we're gonna nose this and taste it, and then we're gonna see if I have anything here on my rye shelf that even compares to this or compete with it. Um, I've got a few things that I kind of like to compare it to, and I'm thinking about it now, and I've only got a couple that are in this proof range. Uh, even some of my other barrel proof rise are, are relatively low barrel proof, low proof numbers. So I'm not sure how well they're going to compete with this monster, but we're going to test it out and see what we can find out. So. Here we go. I never thought that I wanted rye in my cherry Coke until I smelled this. So, and, then, and then cinnamon and lots of really nice sweet. It's not quite charred oak. And, and a lot of times I use the word toasted oak. I don't mean toasted oak like the finishing toasted barrels. I mean like the oak doesn't come across super charred. It comes across burnt, but not like charred to death. It doesn't smell like a, a log out of your fireplace or out of your burn pit. It smells like Seared oak, maybe seared oak is what I should start using instead of toasted, because I've had people be confused. So this isn't a toasted product. I know, I'm telling you what it tastes like, what it smells like. So maybe I'll start saying seared oak. Maybe that's a better way to describe it. But I get that on this. It's like somebody took a torch and just seared the oak, like that finishing process. raucous vanilla. But what's interesting is it's the vanilla. If you've ever done this when you're cooking something, we are using egg whites and you add vanilla to it, like you're making a cake, whatever. I get that smell, the smell of the egg whites with vanilla, lots of vanilla. Maybe even bordering on tapioca pudding. And then every now and then I'm getting a, a strong alcohol whiff that's just laden with rye. Oh man. Starting to get a little bit of apple peel. And a little bit of grape, like green grape. Wow, this just keeps evolving and changing. It's ridiculous. Let's, my mouth is watering already. I have to swallow before I can swallow. So, let's taste this. Oh! 
man. Whoo. That, <clears throat> that is such a, ju that is such a juxtaposition. The nose is, is actually really sweet and mild and pretty and, and it keeps evolving and changing, but it's all these like nice, pretty textures and, and like smooth, I don't mean smooth as in smooth. I mean the texture smoothly transition from one to the next. There's nothing sharp or spicy on the nose or abrupt. The palate hits you like a roller coaster. Like you're standing on the tracks and it plows through you. And it's just spicy and big and bold. And, and it hits you in a couple waves. Oh man, second sip isn't quite as intense. It calms down, giving you vanillas, butterscotch, oak, super creamy. I, on that second sip, I picked up very little rye. It, it's just like a texture there. It's not like a dominant note. The first sip, it was like a rye freight train running through your brain. Let's try one more. Oh. Starting to get a hint nutty. The rye is still really mild on the third sip. The rye is still like still mild from the second sip. First sip it was like and then it calms down or you acclimate, which I however you want to describe that. And it just is just gorgeous and luxurious. And just man, I want to sip that all day. I could really put a murder on that bottle. All right, let's see what, let's start. Let's start with Alberta Prima and see how this compares. This has a very different aspect to the rye. This is a very fresh, ripe, floral rye. Yeah, that's way darker, way more robust, way, way more bold. This is fresher and prettier. Prettier is the wrong word. Brighter. It doesn't come off younger, just like the rye has a very different aspect. Yes, this is way more spearmint and like winter mint and minty. This had very little mint, very little uh, uh, of those eucalyptus and evergreen. It was just a very different kind of rye. So let's see. I'm going to, I know this is way lower proof, but I'm going to check out the Michter's toasted rye. This is barrel strength, but this is only 108 proof. So this may not hold up at all to the OF. The nose is closer, but you can tell that this is missing a lot of that alcohol punch, and so the, the notes are, are a lot lower. Now, the reason it's not that this is watered down in any way, Mictors just uses a very low entry proof for when they're putting their alcohol into the barrels. So they don't get a high proof, barrel proof, when the, the barrels are finished aging. Oh yeah. And this is uh, much more minty than the Old Forester as well. Those, they don't compare to each other. It's the Michter's Toasted is amazing, beautiful, gorgeous rye, but it, it just doesn't compete with this old Forester. Um, the only other thing I was thinking about, now I, my old trusty Pikesville, see this is a barely legal rye, and you know, only 51% rye. So this smells more like a bourbon compared to any of these three. 
That's that's much more like a bourbon. So that's I'm not even gonna compare that. That's not even gonna gonna get there. Now I have this Shenley from Treaty Oak, and this is another Canadian. I always forget that's a twist off top. Man, that's freaking weird. Um, this is another Canadian rye, and so it it may not compete, but it is higher proof. This one is 130. Five proof. So this has got the legs to compete with the 128. Let's see how they compare. This is again typical Canadian, more floral, more fresh, like flowering, like repro. It's funny. It, the the images that it conjures in my mind is of the rye plant in a reproductive cycle. That's what I picture when I smell a lot of Canadian rye. It's like it's it's flowered, it's ready that rye is ready to reproduce. And on American rye, and that may not that I'm sure has nothing to do with how it's grown or when it's harvested or anything, but that's what I picture. Uh, the the smell of of a plant in its reproductive cycle, that's what I kind of get on Canadian rye way more than on American rye. I don't know why. This has got the legs. This has the proof. This, the OF though, is way darker, way more viscous on the nose and richer. This is brighter, shinier. That has the right punch though on the palate. Kaboom! It, that's just a huge punch in the palate. Wow, okay. That's the only thing that I have that I think competes. I, you know, I've got, I've got a few other finished ones. This one obviously is, this is a Burai. Um, I've got an old, uh, Kentucky Owl back there, batch 11, but I know it doesn't compete. It does not compete with this. I didn't love that bottle. The Old Forester is the best rye I have in my collection right now. That is outrageously good. <sighs> rye and cherry coke. And it's funny too, because I get a lot of cherry coke on a lot of my single barrel Old Forester products. Tons of cherry coke. And this one does not disappoint in that department. Thanks for watching, guys. Until next time, try to find you an old Forester single barrel rye. If you can, get it. Get you one. Damn. Till next time, I hope you have a great day.